Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Saturday night, October or uh, December 20th, 2025. 10.01 p.m. California time here. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 4.7. Pretty good uptick going on here tonight, folks. That's where the... Uh, well, the mega quake warning has been issued for that area by the Japanese government recently. And man, we're starting to see a big uptick in earthquake activity towards the southern end here of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench. Watching that very closely. That's where the uh, latest earthquake is showing right now with a 4.7. And of course, we got a bunch of movement here around the San Ramon area kicking off this evening as well with back to back earthquake activity. Uh, seeing this stir up. Earlier this evening with a 3.9 and a number of other earthquakes in there as well. Literally minutes, some of those within a minute or two of each other. Uh, the latest one shows a 2.0 here. Uh, looks like about 8.20 or so. So it's been a couple hours since we've had an earthquake. But, you know, similar to last night there, the swarm just came and went. And then we picked up a little bit more this morning. Just a little odd activity stirring up out here. This 3.9 originally coming in as a 4-pointer. Um, now, I went back here and looked at the historical data since about uh, the year 2000. I pulled up uh, 3.0 and above. I believe that's what this is right here. 3.0 and above in the last 25 years. And some people are saying this is really common around this area. So let's take a look and see what we got here. Okay, so far this year, right, uh, a number of threes. If we look back, even back in... Uh, November, we had a number of threes as well. Um, looks like uh, 11, and this is just three, but you know, magnitude 3.0 and above. And I'm sure there's some smaller quake activity. But there was a good, uh, what do we got, 10 earthquakes or so? Um, so far this year, above the 3.0 level. Going back in time here, we had three of them in 2021. So not as intense. And then we had uh, some activity stirring up there in 2015 as well in the three range. Uh, a little short of what we're seeing today, you know, or recently around the San Ramon area. Uh, but scattered activity, even some back in 2003 it looks like. But nothing as intense or long duration or, you know, in terms of the multitude counts out here is what we're seeing right now in the last 30 days. Been a, a decent uptick, 155 earthquakes out here. Uh, with the largest so far being that four-pointer yesterday. Decent cluster of activity for sure. Now, when you go back here, though, you know, this is just one area seeing the swarm. So if you want to call this common, okay, it, it's somewhat common, but not as intense as what we're seeing right now. But when you factor into all the other swarms that have been stirring up down here across the Bay Area, it's an overall part here of seismic increase across the plate boundary and getting that pressure transfer off of there into into a number of different faults out here. You know, it's not just one swarm here. We've seen multiple swarms out here around the Bay Area recently, including this one up around Santa Rosa. Uh, that's, uh, you know, they've seen a bunch of twos, even a four-pointer in there as well. So all this elevated activity we're seeing is definitely not normal. Uh, just, you know, say, for example, if this is all we had, and there was just some smaller microquake activity out here, like general uh, general movement. Then I'd be okay. Yeah, this is you know just probably just a part of a swarm. But you got to factor in all these other swarms that are happening here, there, and everywhere around the Bay Area southward. It locks up here around the Parkfield section. That's pretty well primed for at least a six pointer. And then of course the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault primed for a, a big eight point one. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely far from just normal activity out here. Um, considering all the different swarms that have been happening in the region. Uh, last night, well, actually early this morning, well, last night, okay, take that back. <laughs> 3.4 out there along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault as well. So things were starting to adjust for, uh, you know, in that uh, respect there along the plate boundary. A couple more smaller quakes since then. Uh, those kicking up tonight, it looks like. So, we're, you know, it's moving. The, uh, the plate boundary out here is trying to move. Uh, we're getting those stress and strain quakes across a number of different faults. Got to watch the San Andreas Fault up and down the board. That is the big player out here, of course. You know, a seven-pointer on the Calaveras Fault would be no joke either. 
Uh, even a 6.9 along the Hayward Fault, no joke. Any big earthquake like that in the Bay Area would be quite damaging. Uh, here's another recent swarm down here around the Ojai area. Uh, that uh, seen a number of twos, even a three-pointer this morning. This is just another area of many different swarms throughout the western side of California. And basically all the swarms have been happening on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. Not so much inland into the North American side. We've, well, we've had a little bit, but the swarms that I've been seeing definitely stirring up here. Um, down south here along the Pacific side. Up north, obviously, we've got that... Uh, uh, Bay Area activity on the plate boundary and a bunch here on the uh, North American side of the plate boundary. So it's it's just a mixed bag of swarming. There's one just off the southern branch right now, a little point nine. Uh, it's it's remaining locked and uh, built up for now. No big earthquake activity on it, but that could happen at any given time there. The southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Nothing new to report there across Northern California or the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. We will give a quick glance here at the Cascadia slow slip event map tonight. See what we have uh, for Cascadia trimmer, which shows us, uh, I really don't see anything showing up here tonight. Nothing. In the last week we've had a little bit, but the last two days since the Bay Area has been rocking and rolling, there's been nothing going on there. Uh, so that's a slow slip event. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there, but uh, it is the weekend, so we do got to double check and see if there really is anything going on there, or if there isn't, because uh, most of the time the earthquakes that occur there uh, will not get reported to the earthquake catalog unless it's above a 2.5 level, and not a whole lot going on there through Yellowstone, as you can see, a couple of smaller earthquakes there from early this morning, but those are very small in the magnitude department. Not a whole lot happening out there across the rest of the country. Watching Japan, of course, that's a decent cluster right up here. Look at that line of activity stretching from the surface uh, subduction zone area. Interface region right here all the way down. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a couple earthquakes of a little bit deeper nature here. 21 miles deep there for a couple of those quakes. Uh, there's one 26 over here. Got to watch this, folks, because we got uh, a lot of stress and strain built up out here. This segment, the Kuro Camp Chatka, southward into the northern end of the Japan Trench. Watch that for further larger movement. It's got uh, a lot of stress built up for sure. A lot of newer activity out here around Papua New Guinea area within the last hour. Looks like we got a 5.2 and a more recent 4.5 here. The uh, stress tends to transfer along this trail, this train of uh, plate boundaries there. Uh, looking at the rest of the globe, yeah, I got a pretty good must, a uh, pretty good cluster of activity down here up north. This should fill in potentially here overnight. We'll watch that. Uh, New Zealand, there's a four pointer off the uh, North Island coast, fairly recent, but nothing big going on there for now. Some decent uptick up there around the Alaska area where the seven pointer struck here uh, a couple weeks back. Now, you seen a 4.4 and uh, a couple other threes in there as well. So we're getting some decent. Uh, pressurization again in this area creating some aftershock sequences middle america trench some twos and threes maybe a four pointer nothing big the uh, south america area a lot of older quake activity the atlantic ocean as you can see just a couple smaller earthquakes out there and uh, the rest of this area just typical movement really nothing uh, major to speak of uh, within that region for now Taking a glance here at the space weather activity, we do have this massive coronal hole facing us. That, uh, of course, is a uh, decent size one. Take a look at this. Number nine, we got uh, the latest image here. Shows, uh, I'll click on that. There we go. Showed it. Shows that it's directly facing us, directly squared up and lined up with the Earth Sun plane. Uh, if anything big were to happen, well, I mean, we're seeing an uptick in earthquake activity, so this could have something to do with it. Might be one of those times here where we'll see uh, another big event or two happening with uh, this massive coronal hole facing us. Uh, now, the high-speed solar wind stream flowing from that coronal hole should affect us here. It looks like uh, they got it set for the 22nd to the 23rd as uh, far as the aurora potential goes. It takes about 48 hours, 72 hours or so for that to arrive. So this is kind of a little early, but... Uh, We'll see how this plays out. Might get some aurora activity from this high-speed solar wind stream as it interacts with the planet 
um, not tonight, but uh, turn, tomorrow night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night time period. Uh, no major solar flares there in the forecast for now. We do have a couple different areas out here on the eastern area of the sun that's starting to grow a little bit. This one, this one was looking a little bit better this morning, but I'm noticing two opposite polarities here, and they're starting to split. Now, if these continue to split without any further development in it, then it will probably just die off and be a, a relatively stable sunspot. But watch this middle point area between those two uh, clusters there. That uh, could fill in and make it a little bit more complex. That could create a little strong flare or two. Fairly massive area back over here as well, but there's not a whole lot of complexity within that sunspot region. Uh, definitely got some size on it. Oh, did not mean to go there. I want to go back to the space weather here. Uh, but for now, the flare threat will remain low, uh, even with these newer areas coming into view, just because of the lack of complexity. 10% chance there for M flare, X flare at 1% or less. C flare, 75% chance there. Um, and taking a look here at the, um, the forecast for Sacramento and Northern California and the West Coast in general, man, we got a lot of rain coming in. Been raining pretty steady all night here where I'm at in Northern California. It's only going to get heavier as we head uh, towards Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It's going to be a travel nightmare out here across the West Coast, something we haven't had in a little while. Uh, I think the rest of the country would be pretty decent, though, for holiday travels. Uh, but West Coast, yeah, definitely getting in on quite a bit of moisture out there. And it does look like it will continue into the first week of January 2026. The total accumulated precipitation runs out there look uh, quite impressive, folks. Definitely making up for lost time in terms of the lack of rainfall for the first half of December. We had a lot of fog, but no rainfall. Yeah, we're definitely making up for that. We still have January, February, March, and maybe April there uh, in our rain to accumulate rain in a rain bucket or rain gauge it's our water season our water year right now so this is good that we're getting it that's for sure southern california going to get in on that action as well all right not a whole lot going on there on the seismograph stations for now but man we have a lot uh that's beginning to ramp up out here just be on guard stay alert and uh, make sure you have an earthquake plan out here because you know even though some people are saying this is normal it, they're they're overlooking all these other swarms that have been occurring out here. And that's that's a factor you have to consider when it comes to maybe uh, all these being foreshocked to something bigger happening out here. And I definitely got my eyes there on the plate boundary itself. That's the San Andreas Fault. But, you know, the Calaveras Fault there itself is capable of producing an earthquake up around the seven-pointer or so. And the Hayward Fault, you know, we, we got uh, a number of faults out here around the Bay Area we need to keep our eyes on have a good saturday evening folks we'll see you guys out here for the sunday morning update take care